in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord Jesus give you his peace. Ave Maria. We celebrate today St. Nicholas Pick and Companion Martyrs, who died on this day in the year 1572. And the readings that we meditate on this day are very strong, both with the results of sin and being hated for Christ's sake, and also uh, at the supernatural level of Ephesians 6 of fighting not against flesh and blood, but really fighting against the principalities and powers. And so, consequently, the ultimate remedy is going to be on that level as well, which will which we already know is the very obedience of Christ, the love, the act of love coming through the human will of Christ that is able to conquer, swallow up the divide of death, the separation of death. And that, Nicholas Pick and Companions, uh, were given that gift. And it's a beautiful gift and it's something that we can actually pray for. And it is the very seed of Christians of the faith. And speaking of the faith, the faith was under attack in Holland, uh, where they died, it was Calvin and his followers uh, that uh, put these men to death. They had taken possession of the city of Gorkum, and uh, because of Calvin's false theology, which uh, rejects the primacy of Peter, the bishop of Rome, uh, he soon fell into the era of tyranny, which is basically, this is Father Cornelius Lapide on Calvin. They were something of contemporaries, I guess, very soon after these things happened. Father Lapidy wrote this. Uh, Calvin also maintained that the faith, by which he meant his own perversion of it, should be defended and propagated by force of arms, even by deposing and slaughtering lawful princes and kings, bishops, priests, and Catholics who opposed it. And so it's always the trick of the evil one to uh, the error of disobedience and then eventually winding up as tyrannical. And that's what happened here. Uh, Catholics dismissed from the area about 19 clergy taken as prisoners, 11 friars minor, four secular priests, four priests of other orders, including the Premonstrantians, I'm saying that correctly, and uh, eventually put to death. Father Nicholas Pick was the um, kind of the lightning rod of the group because he was the guardian, he was the, the head of the group, and he suffered the most cruel torments. He was hung, and uh, the rope, in fact, broke, and he fell to the ground unconscious. They thought he was dead, and he eventually reawakened and quoted St. Paul, Romans 8:18. 8, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And it gets at the aspect at a man facing death, who sees the vanity of all things of this world, and the only thing that is enduring is true charity, and that charity working through his heart and saying, this is negligible. That's really what he's looking at. This is negligible in comparison to what awaits us, brethren. So he's strengthening his brethren, um, and eventually they are taken to another city, and they're hung in this kind of turf shed. You picture two cross beams in this old wooden structure, and a number of these men just hanging from them, uh, very shabbily from about 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning. So it gets at uh, what we just looked at on Sunday with false prophets and proposing error, and by their fruits you shall know them. And those fruits are the bitter uh, things such as persecutions and bad morals and so forth. Uh, so these things, uh, of course, happen in every age, and of course they happen in our age as well. The thing that we can think about this morning is, one, how am I doing with truly viewing uh, the transitory, transitoriness of this life in its true perspective, as seeing uh, things as truly being vain, and that is to say anything except for the love of Christ as not being worth my time. And that's the only thing that's worth my time. And so... Um, the second aspect of that, that's the negative aspect, how am I doing with detaching from things of this world? The positive aspect is, how am I doing with uttering my fiat in the face of sufferings, in the face of uh, those little divisions, those little separations, those little deaths that are preparing each one of us for, ultimately, the separation of body and soul at the end of our lives. And that should be a good indicator of the love of Christ in us because 
Pope Benedict, as Cardinal Radziker will talk about how suffering is the inner side of love. Suffering is the inner side of love because it's always going to be an element of sacrifice as love works out through human situations. So we ask these heroic men for their intercession this day that however we're called to this day and in the immediate future to lay down our lives in just patience or meekness or however it might work out that the victory may be ours. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.